A film made by four young directors, two Israeli and two Palestinian, has won Best Documentary at Germany's Berlinale Film Festival. It's a prestigious prize, and this was the moment that two of those directors, Israeli Yuval Abraham and Palestinian Barzel Adra, went on to stage to accept it. I want to say we are, we are standing in front of you now. Me and Basel are the same age. I am Israeli, Basel is Palestinian. And in two days, we will go back to a land where we are not equal. I am living under a civilian law, and Basel is under military law. We live 30 minutes from one another, but I have voting rights. Basel is not having voting rights. I'm free to move where I want in this land. Basel is, like millions of Palestinians, locked in the occupied West Bank. This situation of apartheid between us, this inequality, it has to end. Very, very powerful call for equality. And it may be hard to believe that that call for equality has now led to outcry in Germany and Israel. The day after the speech, the Israeli ambassador to Germany called the entire festival into question, saying this, Once again, the German cultural scene showcases its bias by rolling out the red carpet exclusively for artists who promote the delegitimization of Israel. At the Berlin Ali 2024, anti-Semitic and anti-Israel discourse was met with applause. It appears the lesson from Documenta hasn't sunk in. Under the guise of freedom of expression and art, anti-Semitic and anti-Israel rhetoric is celebrated. You don't need seven professors to state the obvious. This is blatant anti-Semitic discourse. Cultural so-called leaders, your silence is deafening. It's time to raise your voices and reject this grotesque charade. Act now or forever be part of this shameful legacy. And the mayor of Berlin also chimed in with this. What happened yesterday at the Berlin Ali was an intolerable and relativization was an intolerable relativization. Anti-Semitism has no place in Berlin, and that also applies to the art scene. I expect the new management at the Berlin Ali to ensure that such incidents do not happen again. In Israel, Channel 11 aired that same 30-second clip of Yuval Abraham's speech, except underneath it, um, they displayed the Chiron, the Israeli filmmaker's anti-Semitic speech. That was not an anti-Semitic speech, right? Now, the reaction might not just be about the content of Abraham's speech. Of course, the film that he, Adra, and their two co-directors made is called No Other Land. It documents the relationship between Adra, a member of a Palestinian West Bank community that the IDF are trying to displace to make way for settlers, and Abraham, an Israeli journalist who tries to help. That story of Palestinian-Israeli cooperation and friendship is a pretty challenging one for Zionists, and the hysteria around it has led to direct consequences for Abraham too, who said this on Twitter. A right-wing Israeli mob came to my family's home yesterday to search for me, threatening close family members who fled to another town in the middle of the night. I am still getting death threats and had to cancel my flight home. This happened after Israeli media and German politicians absurdly labelled my Berlin Ali ward award speech, where I called for equality between Israelis and Palestinians, a ceasefire and an end to apartheid, as anti-Semitic. The appalling misuse of this word by Germans, not only to silence Palestinian critics of Israel, but also to silence Israelis like me who support a ceasefire that will end the killing in Gaza and allow the release of Israeli hostages, empties the word anti-Semitism of meaning and thus endangers Jews all over the world. As my grandmother was born in a concentration camp in Libya and most of my grandfather's family was murdered by Germans in the Holocaust, I find it particularly outraging that German politicians in 2024 have the audacity to weaponize this term against me in a way that endangered my family. It goes on. But above all else, this behavior puts Palestinian co-director Basel Adra's life in danger, who lives under a military occupation surrounded by violent settlements in Masafayata. He is in far greater danger than I am. If this is what you're doing with your guilt for the Holocaust, I don't want your guilt. Dahlia, I mean... The Germans are really making fools of themselves on this particular issue. And I think that response from Yuval Abraham couldn't be more powerful. I mean, it's been utterly mind boggling um, to to watch. I think, you know, I mean, there's a very interesting kind of thing happening um, where, you know, particularly Berlin, uh, has become over, you know, the German state has put a lot of work into trying to make Berlin in particular be this kind of hub for cultural and art workers um, around the world, which is kind of done through these very generous state subsidies and creating an economy where basically it's possible, it's one of the few places where it feels possible to kind of make art and work as an artist and sort of materially survive. And yet now um, it's kind of crumbling 
under the contradiction of the fact that despite trying to become that safe haven, it's fundamentally intolerable of divergence and plurality. There's no word to describe how obscene it is for the German state to be telling the, uh, the you know, a, a descendant of Holocaust survivors what is and is not anti-Semitic. I mean, it's it's absolutely, it, it, it's mind-boggling. And what it shows me is that Germany has still not rid itself of the arrogance and the white supremacy um, that leads it to believe that it should legislate over the basic rights and life and de- of death of certain groups of people. And I think that the reference there to guilt, um, when he says, you know, if this is what you do with your guilt, I don't want it. It speaks to that extremely superficial way in which Germany and frankly, the rest of Europe has engaged and understood um, the politics of Nazism and the politics of the Holocaust and understanding, instead of seeing it as this kind of moment where Europe just lost its mind, but rather not seeing it as the outcome of a kind of or like rules-based, hierarch- deeply hierarchical, deeply racialized politics that relies on constantly having a constitutive outside, that constantly re- relies on having a racialized outsider that it uses to define itself and that it uses to practice its state violence on. It never actually was able to reckon with that. And so now we see it reproducing that politics and speaking over the people that it claims to be doing this in the name of in order to exact that politics. And to give a bit of context as well on where kind of Germany is, you know, Germany, like a lot of the rest of Europe, is currently experiencing a resurgence of the electoral far right. You know, the AFD is the second most highest polling party in Germany right now. And a lot of German liberals are looking at this with horror and thinking, how could this possibly happen? You know, and 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 very confused by why this is the case. And instead of looking inwards and thinking, what is it about our scapegoating and highly racialized politics that has led to this form of, of politics resurging? in our country. Instead of doing that, it has decided to externalize it and make it an outside problem. You know, it's a Muslim problem. Um, You know, Muslims are bringing their savage and backwards ways of being and importing this kind of far right or kind of anti-Semitic politics back into Germany. And it's it's a shocking, like, abdication of responsibility for one's own problems and one's own contradictions that is not only it, it's like and it's it's obviously been particularly coming to the fore in Germany but I think it is also something that is being experienced throughout Europe and I can you know the only kind of um uh the only kind of example that I can think of um that is it, it kind of reminds me of a form of pink washing where you know in order to to like basically justify racist and scapegoating politics, you use this idea of like, oh, we're going to fight for queer rights by criminalizing and targeting communities that we view as inherently queer phobic. And it's like, guys, there is a way of doing politics and a way of like doing so-called progress that doesn't involve victimizing and criminalizing and doing racist violence against a new group of people. And so for me, it's like, on the one hand, it's feels like some like scenes that I could never have imagined I would see. And yet on the other hand, it is an out quite a predictable outcome of a failure of Europe to understand what the kind of underlying logics and politics have led to this constant attachment to this racist outsider politics, this need to constantly create this racialized outsider against what against whom you define yourself. Um, yeah, I don't know how this is possibly going to end. I don't know how that German cultural minister, you know, goes back and looks at herself in the mirror at the end of the day, knowing that she's sort of like telling Israeli filmmakers that they are anti-Semitic. I mean, it's insane, but like, the, the knots that they kind of tie themselves into to do this, but this is the this is a a kind of 
a failure to seriously reckon with their history and instead to externalize it and push it out onto others um, is a very, very dangerous path. It gets even more insane, right? Because Germany's stance on speech that's critical of Israel or supportive of Palestinians is clearly bizarre and authoritarian. And this is just such a clear illustration for you of how it's also become completely absurd. Now, after Yuval Abraham and Basel Adra collected their award at the Berlin Ali, so that's um, Germany's Bild newspaper published this story. So Berlin Ali scandal, says the headline. Then here they're clapping for anti-Israel speech. So that's the headline that Bild gave it. And there are two blurry faces inside red circles. Now those faces belong to Germany's Commissioner for Culture, Claudia Roth, and Berlin Mayor Kai Wegner. Roth in particular has come under pressure for applauding, with some saying it shows her endorsing anti-Semitism. And in response to those accusations, Roth has said this. She claimed she was only clapping for the Israeli filmmaker and not for the Palestinian director who was standing right next to him. She has said her applause, quote, was directed at the Jewish Israeli journalist and filmmaker Yuval Abraham, who spoke out in favor of a political solution and a peaceful coexistence in the region. Now, Abraham actually referred um, to Israeli apartheid, right? So it was Yuval Abraham's speech that seems to have caused so much controversy. So it's unclear what Adra said that could have caused more offense. He referred to Palestinians being, quote, slaughtered, right? But I'm not really sure how what he said is going to be different from Yuval Abraham. So very, very strange that sort of in aid of anti-Semitism, you have this minister of culture who has stood up and said, oh, no, 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 no. The, the, the film may have had two directors, one of them Israeli and one of them Palestinian, but I was only clapping for the Israeli. You know, I was specifically clapping in this direction, not in that direction, while sort of making sure that I couldn't see the Palestinian. I was clapping the Israeli. It's just nonsense. I mean, it sounds obviously racist. You can make up your own mind if it is. I think the idea that you're only clapping someone from you know, one ethnic background and not the other, to me, sounds pretty racist. Um, very, very ridiculous in any case. 